Hey everybody, welcome to the GMG Review. We're back running through today the Warhammer the Horus Heresy Lieber books, and now we're on to the Lieber Hereticus. Having completed all of the nine legions in the Legion Astartes, we turn now to the traitors of the Warmaster Horus, and we kick it off with an absolute fan favorite, the Emperor's Children. Uh, while not ultimately responsible, and actually there's kind of a tragic tale too um, of what happens with the Broken Mirror and of course the possession of Fulgrim. The Emperor's children were already well on their way to some kind of messed up stuff in the background with weird experimentation using Xenos technology, uh, kind of strange sonic uh, augmentation of their warriors, and all kinds of other weirdness. I, I would say um, Fulgrim is one of the best Horus Heresy novels, and if you just want to read a standalone one, it basically is what happens after the massacre at Istvan V. Uh, Fulgrim has, you know, killed his best friend, Ferris Manus. Things are, things are starting to get super weird. Um, and you realize that it might not have actually been Fulgrim, maybe, that killed Ferris Manus. It might have been the man in the mirror. Um, and that uh, there's kind of a Dorian Gray thing happening, you know, with, uh, with Fulgrim and whoever was inside Fulgrim at that point, or maybe inside the Blade of Lair. Anyway, uh, moving on, beautiful purple and gold, super fun to paint, um, and yeah, they've got some interesting and very different and very um, non-legionary upgrades possible for them, and also some very legionary kind of like imperial purpley ones too. So let's jump in with their core special rules, the Legion of Astartes Emperor's Children, get Flawless Execution. On a turn in which they make a successful charge, even if that charge is considered disordered, models with the Astartes Emperor's Children special rule make their attacks in an assault at one initiative step higher than normal, after any initiative modifiers from other special rules have been taken into account. Models with the um, Astartes Emperor's Children special rule and the vehicle unit subtype gain a plus one to all to hit rolls made for defensive weapons when making shooting attacks as part of a reaction. So even the vehicles get a bonus. Basically, they're letting their feet in quick. So you're getting bonus initiative on the charge, and if you're shooting as a reaction with your defensive weapons and your guns, you get that sweet, sweet plus one to hit. Uh, you get the perfect tools, all your cool war gear options, the Phoenician's own. You get a Tartarus Centurion that can become a Phoenix Warden Consul. He's the bodyguard of the um, Phoenician's basically like leader type, and his rules go into their, their special unit as well. And then Exemplars of War, uh, your special um, warlord traits. Now what's cool in here, uh, as as is sort of like the the I guess the gripping part of Horus Heresy, you do get some rules for some loyalist uh, emperor's children as well. So their advanced reaction, the perfect counter. If someone declares a charge at you once per battle, you can declare a charge back. Um, it's before the charge rolls make or made rather, and um, your opponent rolls their charge roll, you roll yours. If you roll higher, you initiate the charge instead of them. So you basically jump charge onto that enemy unit and you perform the charge right away and count as charging. If they roll higher than you, you basically make an overwatch attack um, as normal and the perfect counter goes off um, as an overwatch instead. And of course you can use defensive weapons on a uh, vehicle and you get a um, use your wall of death stuff for your flamers if they're within eight. So it kind of goes off no matter what, but if you roll higher during that charge roll, you get to make the charge instead of them and you basically sucker punch them on the way in. Uh, your warlord traits, there's a traitor only, a loyalist only, and a paragon of excellence one. So traitors only, the broken mirror, um, so stuff starts to get weird. When a friendly unit comprised of more than one model with, uh, with, and are within 12 of a warlord with this trait, Fails a morale check, kill somebody, <laughs> and then they pass instead. Basically, uh, you look in the mirror and uh, you don't want to let that guy down. Um, once this win's been resolved, the unit's considered to have passed a morale check and play continues as normal. Uh, in addition, and sorry, and there's no armor saves or damage mitigation rolls. That guy just dies. <laughs> he looks in the mirror and something sucks his soul out, and then the unit just rallies or passes the morale check. In addition, an army whose warlord has this trait can make an additional reaction in the shooting phase. Um, then you have Martyrs of Istvan, a loyalist only one. Um, you can select this if you're loyalist. A world with this trait and all models in a unit that they join that have the Emperor's Children special rule gain plus one to all hit rolls. They're made while locked in combat with any enemy unit that has Legion of Astartes X and Traitor Allegiance. In addition, your warlord can make an initial reaction in the assault phase as long as they're still alive. Um, so then you have Paragon of Excellence is the universal one. When it, uh, any friendly unit within 12 of the Warlord with this trait, including the Warlord and any unit they've joined, passes a morale check, they gain plus one weapon skill at the end of their controlling player's next turn. Uh, this benefit can only be applied once. 
In addition, an army whose warlord has this trait can make an additional reaction in the movement phase. So if you take a casualty enough to make a morale check and you pass, then off you go. You get plus one up and skill. The will show them <laughs> we're the best kind of a warlord trait. Then you have two rights of war. The first one is the Maruskara. Uh, up to four units selected as elites, troops are fast choice in attachment with this right of war that don't also have heavy, slower bombard subtype can be given outflank before the battle. All the controlling player's units made up entirely of models with the Emperor's Children's Special Rule that are part of this attachment using this right of war and deployed on the uh, battlefield at the start of the battle get plus one of their movement characteristic until the start of any turn in which the controlling player's unit brings on any of their own units from reserve. So that includes deep strike, flanking assault, or subtraining assault. So basically... You put up to four in a flank assault, everybody else is moving extra fast until they show up. The controlling player does not make reserve rolls for the units uh, assigned to a flanking assault or subtraining assault. Instead, the controlling player may choose to have all of them show up at the start of any of their turns after the first without making a reserve roll. So you show them up whenever you want, the perfect maneuver. But limitations, the attachment using this right of war may not include any movement zero units, slower bombard units, no more than half the total number of units in this right of war may be uh, assigned to the flanking or subtraining assault or held in reserve. And attachments using this right of war must take a Legion Centurion, Cataphracti Centurion, or Charter Centurion with the Phoenix Warden console upgrade as an HQ choice. So basically you have a uh, hat. Uh, my, my reserves show up right when I want them. I made the perfect maneuver. Look how fancy I am. Kind of an army list. But no slow stuff. And then right of war, the third company elite. This is all based on your Terminators. Cacophony squads may be taken as troop choices um, using this right of war. And any unit composed entirely of models with the Emperor's Children special rule and the infantry unit type may select a surgical enhancement for 30 points per unit. All models in the unit must be given the same surgical enhancement. So you get a discount rate on the surgical enhancement, but it means you're taking like sonic blasters and stuff on all your squads. So, yeah, these are the guys that went under the knife for fa Fabius Bile and uh, came back a little weird with stuff stuck in their necks. Um, and then this right of war may only be used by a detachment with the Traitor Allegiance, and all models with the character unit subtype in a detachment with this right of war must have a surgical augment. Um, and uh, yeah, so those are your those are your special elites. So your your pre-noise marine noise marines. I said terminators I think earlier, but I meant noise marines. Um, and then your armory of the Emperor's children. So those same surgical augments. If you're a character, you can take it for twenty points, which is why that thirty point for a squad discount is pretty huge. You can have Sonic Shriekers during a turn in which at least one model equipped with Sonic Shriekers successfully charges, or is themselves charged. All models and enemy units locked in combat with them are minus one to all hit rolls. That's a pretty big debuff. Models that are already immune to the effect of Fear Rule are not affected by this modifier. So Salamanders say no. <laughs> and then Subsonic Pulsar, a model equipped with this, basically you have like a bat screech, like a sonar. All models equipped with this upgrade, any unit they join, ignore the penalty to leadership and ballistic skill imposed by night fighting. And then Sonic Lance, a model equipped with this upgrade, and gains the Sonic Lance weapon. It's template strength 2, assault 1, breaching 6+, plus, and pinning. So basically a death screech, a doom siren. And then Phoenix Pattern Power Weapons can replace your power weapons if you're a character. Um, a Rapier is user strength AP3, melee rending 6+, plus, murderer strike 6+, plus, or a Power Sphere is strength plus 2, AP3, reach 1, murderous strike 6+, plus, breaching 6+, plus, and 2-handed. So plus 1 initiative, uh, 6 is instant death, and a 6 is also AP2 for breaching. Oh, sorry, a 6 to hit is instant death, a 6 to wound is then um, breaching. And then the Phoenix Warden, he's basically a Tartarus Terminator um, console. He gains the skill unmatched and living icons. Skill unmatched, you can basically, at the start of every combat, um, choose one of the three different forms to do. And the big Terminator squad that's made up of these guys that he leads can do this as well. Uh, everyone has to do it if they're a unit. Uh, they have to do the same move. So perfect guard is your minus one to your, um, uh, your plus one weapon skill for the purposes of determining how your opponent is hitting you. So your one weapons go higher, but you're, they are minus one to your attack characteristic. Perfect Strike is the opposite, your uh, minus one attack, but your plus one to your weapon skill for rolling to hit. And then Perfect Fury, your minus one weapon skill, but you get plus one attack. And then Living Icons, a uh, model with a special rule in all models in any friendly unit that they join, and has at least one model within six of a model with a special rule. Um, sorry, all friendly units, not even the ones they join, sorry. All friendly units within six of a model with a special rule gain plus one to the score to calculate the winner in an assault. And the effects of the special rule don't stack though, so multiples don't do anything. Um, but they do stack with the Emperor's Children's Sire of the Emperor's Children special rule. And then your Phoenix Warden gains a Phoenix Pattern Power Weapon of any kind and an Iron Halo for no extra points. 
All right, Fulgrim, the man himself. He might have been possessed. He's got snake legs now, and he killed his best friend, Ferris Manus. 425 points, movement 8, weapon skill 8, strength toughness 6, uh, 6 wounds, and initiative 8, 6 attacks, leadership 10, and 2 plus save. So he looks kind of standard on uh, first glance. He's got a bunch of special rules. The Gilded Panoply, 2 plus armor, 3 plus invulnerable in melee, and 4 plus against all other wounds. The Blade of Lair, um, which he comes with, but you can swap it for Firebrand, Fireblade, which was actually um, wrought from by Ferris Manus. The Blade of Lair is AP2, Melee, Duelist Edge 1, so plus 1 initiative. Mastercrafted Fleshbane and Specialist Weapon. Now that Duelist Edge is important in challenges. You kind of have to wonder, how did he kill Ferris Manus? Well, here's the thing. Uh, he's getting a bunch of bonuses to it in his initiative, and those add up. Uh, Fireblade is plus 1 Strength AP2, Melee, Murder Strike 5+, plus for some instant death, Mastercrafted and Specialist. So, two very good swords, but the uh, Blade of Lair is kind of super important. Um, he has frag grenades, of course, on top of that. And then he's Master Legion, bulky 6, Sudden Strike 1. So when he charges, he's initiative 9. If he's using uh, the Blade of Lair to challenge, he's initiative 10. And then he's Crusader, Tactical Excellence, Sublime Swordsman, Traitor, and Warlord Sire of the Emperor's Children. So what does that mean? Well, Sublime Swordsman, when he makes melee attacks, for every point higher his initiative is than his opponent, he gets plus 1. So if he's charging into a duel with a initiative 4 space marine, his 6 attacks go up by 6. <laughs> he has 12 attacks. Um, if he's fighting a Praetor's initiative 5, he'd go up to 11 attacks. So you can see how his, his attacks quickly add up. Um, tactical excellence once per battle at sort of any phase. Fulgrim's controlling player can declare the use of this special rule. For the duration of any phase, any enemy units that attempt to declare a reaction against a move, shooting attack, or charge, Made by Fulgrim, or unit that he's joined, must first pass the leadership test, uh, unless the reaction they're making includes at least one of the primarch unit type, uh, in which case that unit can declare reactions as normal. So he forces, basically, if you're making a reaction, you to pass a leadership deck to do it, unless there's another primarch there, in which case they're as smart as he is. And then he's got the uh, Warlord Sire of the... Uh, sorry, also he has his pistol, uh, Firebrand. 15-inch range, it's, big, it's a big... Um, What's it called? Volkite Pistol. Strength 6 AP 4, Pistol 2, Deflagrate, Shred, Mastercrafted. So, cool little gun. Um, but then as Sire of the Emperor's Children, he automatically has this Warlord trait. All friendly models with uh, the Astartes Emperor's Children special rule that can draw a line of sight to Fulgrim. Can use his leadership for all morale and pinning checks that are required to take. Um, and all friendly it's composed entirely models of that special rule. On the battlefield, add plus one to the wound value for calculating who won a combat. In addition, the first reaction made in each game turned by Fulgrim, and any unities joined do not take up a um, point of your reaction allotment. So he doesn't get a bonus one, it's him, and that's very fitting and in character for the Emperor's Children too, because it's selfish, right? It's him and the unity joins get a free one every turn. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that his his rule of trade is selfish. Um, so yeah, you gotta, a guy who's very good in duels and who's gonna have a massive number of bonus stacks bullying small units but isn't necessarily going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Primarchs. I don't know how he kills Ferris Manus. He must just do it very quickly and get hot dice. All right, Phoenix Terminator Squad. This is your Tartarus Pattern Terminator Squad. They all got power spears, no guns, um, and they can buy surgical augments. Uh, they can take a Proteus for a dedicated transport or a Spartan if they're a big squad. 200 points. Their weapons go 5, 2 wounds, uh, and 2 attacks each. Leadership 8. The Power Spear, obviously, give them the bonus initiative, um, so initiative 5, and they get that sweet, sweet, um, uh, what is it, Lethal Strike and uh, Breaching. Take Grenade Harness for 10 points, and they can all have Surgical Enhancements for 25 points for the entire unit. So you can make a minus 1 to hit, which is cool, probably give them Screamers. Uh, you can buy them as a Retinue uh, for any um, one with Master Legion, in which case they do not take up a slot. And one Phoenix Terminator can be um, uh, given a, a, a Phoenix Rapier or a Standard for 15 points if they're a retinue. A Palatine Blade Squad for 165 points. A Weapon Skill, Blitz Skill 5. These are the, the Super Warrior Fraternity. Um, there are two wounds, two attacks. They have Artificer Armor, Turnable Weapons, and of course, Bull Pistols, Frag and Crack Grenades. They are Counterattack 1, so if you charge them, they get the Charge Bonus. And Skill Unmatched. They can use the Skill Unmatched rules from the character, so can these guys. They're living icons and skill unmatched as well. Uh, also stubborn, which is important. Five extra warriors for 28 points. They can upgrade to power weapons, Phoenix power series, or rapiers for five points each. And then they can take surgical enhancements for 25 points too. 
a plasma pistol or a melt bomb for the prefectures. So a good fighting unit. I mean, if you're going to take something, though, take the Terminators because they're amazing. You're gaining Chosen Warriors. They can all issue challenges, which is cool. I guess these guys aren't Chosen Warriors, but they do have Living Icon and Skill Unmatched. They're, I mean, I guess they're honestly kind of the same. The five bosses and vulnerable saves nice in melee, though. I'd probably take the Terminators. Then Cacophony Squads, your pre-Sword of Emperor's Children um, uh, Noise Marines. So they get the Cacophony, which is their sonic weapons. 36 in train, strength 6, AP 5, assault 3, gets hot, pinning, shell shock 1. So they're minus 1 leadership for the pin tests. And deflagrate, so extra wounds cause extra saves. Or extra hits, rather. Um, they have bolt pistols, sonic shriekers, so you're minus 1 um, to hit them when they charge or are charged. Frag and crack and power armor. Uh, only one wound though, 150 points. You're looking at a pretty spendy five-man squad, but they are effectively heavy infantry, so re-rolling against um, saves. They're fearless as well, uh, which is handy because they're not going to run away, and they're leadership 10. So these are the guys that you know have been surgically altered basically by Fabius. I wish they had two wounds, but they're effectively a legion-heavy support squad, so I can see why they don't. But yeah, they're spendy for just 3 plus save power armor guys. They can shoot back, but with AP5, I don't know that they're that dangerous. The orchestrator can take Artificer Armor, Chainsword, Power Opener, Power Fist, and you can have 5 extra guys for 25 points. But they're, they're effectively just a heavy support squad that has a crazy shreddy gun. All right, we're into characters. Lord Commander Eidolon, 215 points. He's the Lord Commander of the Emperor's Children, second in command only to Fulgrim. He's got his cool Power Thunder Hammer, the Gloria Eterna. So he's strength uh, 8 with it, AP 2, melee brutal 2 for that double damage, unwieldy, thunderous charge, and master crafted. Thunderous charge, he ignores unwieldy when he charges, so it's not AP or initiative 1. Um, he's also got an Archaeotech pistol, Sonic Shrieker, so minus 1 to hit. He's got a jump pack, Death Scream, which is his uh, cool extra screaming weapon, template strength 2, assault 1, rending 6 plus, and pinning. Artificer armor, and then an iron halo, frag and crack grenades. Um, his whole jam is that he calls someone out with prideful onslaught at the beginning of the game He can choose an HQ or a Primarch to be his rival He's plus one to hit them and as soon as he wounds them or someone's a casualty in that unit He's plus one to wound them as well as well as any unit he joins um, And uh, he gets an additional reaction in um, the, uh, the Sorry him and his friends right he's selfish like Fulgrim get an additional reaction um, for free for the first one per turn 215 points. He's a just a he's kind of a baby Fulgrim. I would take him. His model's super cool too. Ah, oh, my favorite. The loyalist captain extraordinaire, Saul Tarvitz, eventually goes to work for um, the uh, the the whatchamacallit, the uh, Sigilite as one of his knights errant. Um, but has one of the coolest stories in the Horus Heresy and leads uh, part of the retreat with the Eisenstein to get off of the planet and go warn the Emperor of the betrayal. So he's a kind of bog-standard captain, just, you know, Praetor stats. Um, he has a Chartable Broadsword, Mastercraft Nemesis, Bolter, Artificer Armor, and Iron Halo. Nothing really cool. Um, or not, not, not cool, but nothing, like, special It's his. He does, however, have um, Master of the Legion, so he can take a, a you know, a, a, a big detachment with him. He's relentless, preferred enemy, Emperor's Children, and a brother betrayed, because he is Lucius' best friend. He gains plus one weapon skill, plus one strength, and plus one toughness when locked in combat with any enemy that's both independent character and Emperor's children. Or any unit that such a model is joined. If an enemy model that has both independent character and Legion of Studies Emperor's children special rules removed as a casualty while locked in combat with Saul Tarvitz or any unit he's joined, you get plus one victory points. Uh, it's plus two if it happens to be engaged in a challenge with Lucius the Eternal, or Captain Lucius. So basically, if he kills Lucius, he gets plus two victory points because that's his brother betrayed. His Chartable Broadsword is a heavy broadsword, basically. It's plus two strength, melee, rending four plus, Duelist Edge two, two-handed and master crafted. So he is initiative seven in melee with uh, Lucius, uh, with Duelist Edge two, rending four plus, because it has no AP value, but it is two-handed. Um, and he is, of course, um, also preferred had to be Emperor's Children, so he rolls against them. He has Defiant Unto Death. I love this uh, special rule. Highly thematic. Um, so if any of the following are true, uh, sorry, if uh, then the following happens. If the army that includes Saul Tarvitz has accrued Fury Victory Points in the enemy, if the enemy includes Saul Tarvitz has Fury units in the battlefield and the enemy combined, um, Captain Saul Tarvitz is within six of an objective, or Captain Saul Tarvitz and any units he's joined is locked in combat with more than one enemy unit, or a single enemy unit that outnumbers Captain Saul Tarvitz's unit. 
If any of these are true, then Salt Arbits and any friendly unit with at least one model within 12 of them gains Fearless. <laughs> and then as long as he's still alive, you get an initial reaction in the shooting phase. So if he's if he's on the back foot, then him and everyone within 12 is Fearless. Tarvitz is the man. And then last but not least, Captain Lucius, the Faultless Blade, Captain of the 13th Company, Weapon Skill 7, a Peerless Fighter, Blitz Skill 5, uh, Initiative 6, and 4 Attacks. 2 plus save, he has 19, which is just his sword. It's very nice, but he doesn't like it very much. Um, he can be gifted the Blade of Lair. Um, uh, or sorry, he comes with the Blade of Lair. He can be gifted, or take, have it taken away. He was gifted it by the, um, the, uh, the Primarch. And then he can take Sonic Shriekers for 10 points to represent him later on as well after he gets worked on by Fabius. And he's not pretty no more. Because he is pretty at one point and then he gets in a fight with some aliens and he's not pretty afterwards. Um, Artificer Armor, Iron Halo, Frag and Crack Grenades. He's Master Legion, independent character, relentless uh, and preferred enemy independent characters. Precision Strikes 3. So every 3 plus to hit he kills exactly the model he wants in a unit. Stubborn, Supreme Duelist, Traitor and the Blade Alone for his Warlord trade. Supreme Duelist, um, if his initiative is higher than the opponent's, he gets plus one attack characteristics, so he gets basically a baby version of um, Fulgrim's Rule. 19, just a really cool sword. Melee, Branding 3+, plus, Duelist's Aegis 1, and Murderer Strike 6+, plus, Master Grafted. Duelist Aegis, he gets plus one weapon skill um, if he's uh, engaged in a challenge. And the Blade of Lair, same as when in, um, it's being carried by Fulgrim. It is AP2, Melee, Duelist Edge 1, Flesh Bane, and Specialist Weapon, Master Crafted. Flesh Bane is the really handy thing there, because he's always winning on twos. And then the Blade alone, he's a captain who hates his Legion. Or, you know, doesn't get along with his Legion. Um, or, well, doesn't lead his company, I guess is more what I'm trying to say. Uh, he's, not, he's not quite Conrad Curse, we'll get there. Uh, if an army's warlord has this trait, then no other models or units may use his leadership regardless of any other rules or war gear that that unit has. However, whenever Captain Lucius is engaged in a challenge, all friendly models in the same unit gain the Fear of Special Rule. In addition, the friend, uh, first unit or first reaction made in each game turn by Lucius or any units join doesn't uh, eat up an AP. I love that all of the special stuff for the Emperor's Children revolves around being greedy. And so there it is, beautiful purple and gold with silver and white helms sometimes. I think they look best actually in the Mark IV. I really like the Mark IV armor and obviously the Tartarus Terminators. Very cool for the Emperor's Children. Uh, purple, gold, and black for the vehicles. And there's that color section. Saul Tarvitz. Oh man, he looks just like his dad. And then Lucius all jacked up and scarred. Slowly turning the Eternal. Uh, the Phoenician Terminators with their spears. And there's Lord Commander Eidolon with his crazy screecher. And his cool, like, <laughs> I don't even know what to describe that haircut as. He's got his, like, undercut side haircut there. Uh, the nascent Noise Marines, of course, the Cataphonia and the Palatine Blades. Beautiful uh, Forge World Dread, too, for these guys. And that's it. So if you want to take a an army that likes to kill characters, duelists, extraordinaires, uh, and some cool anti-infantry tech, of course, well, sonic weapons. And of course, just like paint and purple, then this might be Legion for you. Um, I will say that their story is super compelling, so I think a lot of people will choose the Emperor's Children just because of having been fans of the lore. If you're already a Horus Heresy fan, well worth reading. And of course, the fall of Fulgrim and his betrayal of his brother. Uh, and it just gets weirder afterwards, too, uh, is a super fun part of the horror series you need to dive into. Highly recommend reading Fulgrim. Um, and, of course, the the first three books, uh, I think, follow that whole story really well as well. And the, the drop on his phone, uh, five, where he confronts Ferris Manus, is a excellent read in and of itself. So there it is, the Emperor's Children kicking off the Liber Hereticus. So we'll be back with the next one, of course, which is going to be the Iron Warriors. So I'm going to mash. Have a good one. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look through the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. 
As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.